I were anchored in the middle of nowhere. I had been hired by a faceless corporation to perform a specific task. Without breaching confidentiality, I can tell you that I were to sail out to a given location in the Pacific Ocean, dive down to the bottom, and document whatever be down there. When I arrived initially, I were conflicted. The payout for the job were astronomical, way beyond me normal fee. This alone would usually temper any fears or doubts I had, but the location they had provided me with were unusual. I were wary of it from the beginning, mostly because it really were in the middle of nowhere. Most jobs that I pulled found me off the coast of somewhere, always within viewing distance of some kind of landmass. Here though, there were nothing. I couldn't see land anywhere. This fact by itself were unnerving enough, but on top of this I discovered that location were way off the grid. The nearest shipping path were hundreds of miles away, and the nearest landmass were twice that. This location were as remote a place I had ever been. I had also been given strict orders to go alone, without a dive partner or even a navigator. This strictly speaking ain't exactly legal, and certainly against diving regulations. The coin were just too good. I weren't going to back off on this one. I try, as a general rule, not to imagine what I'll find underneath when I dive. My imagination always trumps whatever I discover on the bottom. Nine times out of ten, I'd be hired to pillage a shipwreck, usually for parts or lost items or even body identification. Occasionally, I get to track and catch some rare animal, but those types of jobs don't pay very well. I should have known something were off when I arrived. I had so many warning signs before I even gotten into the water. I was so wrapped up and thought of pieces of eight, I never truly stopped to consider what I were doing there in the first place. I went through the motions right up until I was fully suited, and about to fall backwards into the deep blue. I thought for a moment, how strange this job be, how unusual the requests were. I were always sent to recover. No one sent me to simply observe the document. Instincts took over and I put my regulator into me mouth before falling into the abyss. That be what it really were, an abyss. On normal dives, one of the most unnerving things I come across be when the visibility be almost down to nothing. Where you have to strain just to see your hand in front of your face. Imagination takes over, waiting for the sharp teeth to brush forth and chomp you to bits. Good dives give you several meters of visibility, perhaps as much as 20. This dive were entirely different. I could see everything, which be to say I saw nothing. It was as if I were dropped into a barren, endless desert. I could see all the way to the horizon in every direction. I could see miles and miles of absolute desolation, an everlasting ocean floor without so much as a single plant on its surface. I felt as small and insignificant as I had ever had in my life at that moment. This place, what I imagined the deepest, darkest parts of space to feel like. I could not fathom what I was supposed to document in this place. I proceeded to follow me anchor line to the bottom. My instructions were oddly specific. At precisely 11.23 am, I were to be on the ocean floor at the exact coordinates given and be ready to document whatever. The message had only said that I would know what it were when I saw it. I checked my watch as I descended and hurried my pace when I saw I only had three minutes to reach the bottom. As I measured each breath, I could not help but look around me. I don't think I've ever been on a dive with this much visibility, and I hated it. I felt as though I had fallen into an alien world. I had the overwhelming sense that I were being observed like I were the fish in a fishbowl. I were constantly looking this way and that, aware that whatever were gonna happen, were gonna happen soon. I were only gonna wait so long in this place. I shivered as I reached depths where the sun's rays failed to penetrate. I hit the bottom with only a minute to spare. My personal recording device had been filming since I went into the water. At this point, I grabbed my camera and got it ready by taking a few shots to make sure that my settings were adjusted properly. 11.23 came and went. Everything was so dead quiet on the bottom, save for me breathing and the bubbles emulating from me tank. I had been on dives and shipwrecks where I found bodies in various stages of decay, 
Dives surrounded by hundreds of sharks. Night dives where your light reflects off the glistening eyes belonging to unseen creatures. Never once have I been frightened. All my life I've been in the water for one reason or another. The water be a part of me, a way of life. Sitting there on the bottom of this barren wasteland, waiting for some unknown thing to happen, I was scared. More minutes passed. I were ready to leave and have this farce be over with when I saw it. It were hard to miss. The only shape of a shadow that I could see in any direction. What it were exactly were another matter. My first thought be that it were a submarine, which would make sense given the specificity of the instructions. I were unnerved at the thought. To have such a large a thing pass by me? I've been lucky enough to observe blue whales, the largest things to ever exist on Earth. But I knew that most submarines dwarfed blues. And there would be something inherently terrifying about being in the water with something so big. My eyes strained through the goggles. My mind couldn't connect the shape to anything. It was still so far off. Difficult to tell the size of it. Whatever it were, it seemed to be coming right for me. The shape began to grow and grow. Definitely not a school of fish. Too big. Were it a whale? No. Bigger than a whale. What be bigger than a whale? Maybe it really were a submarine. One I got myself into. The shadow began to take shape. No. No, not a submarine. The thing were swimming. Moving with an alien fluidity. Me mind went to the images of giant tentacles wrapping around sperm whales. Our ancient tales claiming of monsters emerging from the abyssal trenches and swallowing ships whole. The shadow had now grown to fill almost me entire vision. I couldn't breathe. Me heart were caught in me throat. Me whole body throes. Me terror complete. I knew all at once that whatever happened next, I couldn't face it. Whatever thing burst out of that encompassing shadow was something beyond me. And I knew then and there that if I saw what it really were, me heart would stop and me brain would overload and cease to be. So I hit the deck, so to speak. I laid down on the ocean bed, face to the silt and hands covering me head. A laughably feeble instructional reaction. I clenched me eyes shut, concentrating on me breathing. They tell you in diver training to breathe like Darth Vader. Slow and controlled. Limit your oxygen consumption. I slowly opened me eyes, but I dared not raise me head. The water around me were growing darker. It were close now. I tried to calm myself. Me breathing were too quick, too shallow. I were wasting oxygen. Breathe slower. Calmer. Inhale. I couldn't hear it, but I could feel it. It were over me now. Exhale. It felt so close that I could probably have touched it had I raised me hand but a little. I could sense just how huge this thing were. Like how your stomach drops looking up at a skyscraper. Inhale. I were trembling. More from fear than the cold crushing depths of the dark water surrounding me. I hugged myself trying to draw heat from my own body. Exhale. It was still over me. I couldn't tell if it had stopped or, or simply so colossal in size that it was still passing by me. Inhale. Then it made a sound I'll never forget. A sound that wakes me up in the middle of the night, sheets soaked with sweat. It were a deep, guttural thing that shook me bones like mountains breaking, the earth crackling beneath me and swallowing me whole. I began to cry. And then, it were over. I knew it were gone before he opened me eyes, the sun breaking through the storm clouds. I didn't bother to look around. I swam up with an urgency I didn't know I possessed. A speed driven by crushing fear. Too fast. I were rising too fast. I weren't decompressing properly. I had been too deep for too long. I needed to make at least one decompression stop in order to reduce the excess pressure of inert gases dissolving in me body. If I don't, any number of things could happen to me body, all of them not good. Several meters from the surface, I stopped, tantalizingly close to the outside air. I had to decompress for at least five minutes to be safe. I were only gonna wait there three. One minute, I didn't want to look anywhere but straight ahead. I just knew that if I looked down, I might see it. I felt so exposed, my feet were hanging below me, suspended in the abyss. I tried not to think about it, but what I had seen, what I had felt, what I had heard, 
was something beyond me. Something ancient, primordial. It were like a glimpse into another reality, and me mind weren't prepared. Two minutes. I were paranoid. Me heart racing, sweat forming despite the cold water. I dared to look down. Only for a second. Nothing. Absolute blackness. I couldn't see anything. Not the ocean floor. Not me anchor line. Just darkness. I breathed a sigh of relief. But only for a split second. Me brain whirled around when I realized why I couldn't see the ocean floor. It were right below me. I screamed at the nothingness. Forget the decompression, I were going now. I burst out into the open air, ready to swim towards me boat. But it weren't there. I screamed again, where be it? I whipped me head around and spotted it a few hundred yards away. Stupid. Separated myself from the anchor line. I made a mad dash for it. Swimmer's technique thrown out the window. Just a desperate flint on the limbs trying to drive me through the water. The longest seconds of me life swimming towards me boat. It were a lifetime of eternities. I were waiting for the moment for some thing to wrap around me foot and drag me back towards the abyssal darkness. I had closed me eyes every time I put me face into the water as I attempted a breaststroke. I couldn't see it. I didn't want to see it. But I knew it were there. I could still feel it, the enormity of it. I reached the ladder of me boat. With one last surge of energy, I propelled myself onto me boat. I remember very little after that. The next few days for a haze of memories. By sheer luck, the Coast Guard found me. I were dehydrated and confused. One of me rescuers said I were babbling incoherently, that I kept saying hi, 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 over and over again. I haven't reported anything to me employers. I know they'll eventually come looking. I won't really know what to do when that day comes. I haven't examined the video recording either. I'd be close to destroying any and all evidence that were ever out there. I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes. Always the same dream. I'd be in me bed, and it begins to swallow me. The sheets suffocate me body as I'd be dragged underneath. I can't breathe. Then I'd be dragged further down towards a cavernous black hole. And I look down for a second before I'd be ripped awake and screaming. And in those moments, I remember... I remember seeing something when I was swimming towards me boat, when I couldn't help but open me eyes for the most fleeting seconds. An eye. Like a cratered full moon and a black sky. I'll never go back in the water. <laughs>